The sepsis refers to the effects throughout the body, the systemic effects of infection that is put some type of toxic products into the bloodstream. Many infections could cause it, not all. Most common would be bacterial infections, but one can have a picture of sepsis with other types of, other types of bugs also. The sepsis can affect almost any organ system of the body. The most common ones would be respiratory system with shortness of breath or fluid leaking out into the lungs. The kidneys can be, in, can be affected. The GI tract can affect the motility of the gastrointestinal tract. Neurologic system, one could have confusion or delirium. And really almost any other system of the body, the liver, for example, could be impaired also. Anyone could develop sepsis, even with an intact immune system. Patients on chemotherapy or other immune suppressing drugs are much more at risk for infections that could spread throughout the body. Surgical patients may be at risk, not necessarily so. It may be that there's an exposure related to the surgery. The way sepsis is defined in its stages is beginning with a, what's called a systemic inflammatory response. And those signs are nonspecific, but they do make one think about infection, the most common of which is fever. Other signs that one would notice are rapid heart rate, rapid shallow breathing, and then other laboratory tests such as a high white cell count. Now if those things occur and one thinks there might be an infection, there are some symptoms of the urinary tract or cough with sputum production or an open sore, as you said, then you have a presumed source for infection and these findings that suggest sepsis could be developing. Taking the temperature at objectively with a real measurement is important because it gives a good assessment of how, of how uh, severe this might be. In terms of managing it and doing something, probably the single most important thing is to try to maintain fluid intake because the findings that damage from sepsis probably begins with loss of volume within the body, loss of fluids. And if one's not able to keep down fluids, then that can make the findings and the damage from sepsis much worse. Let's say, for example, one feels some nasal congestion, an achy, like a cold or respiratory, upper respiratory illness they've had many times before, and a low-grade temperature of 99 or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And otherwise, they're up and around and they're able to drink fluids. That would not call for going to the emergency department. But if one was not able to take fluids, became more sleepy and lethargic and was lying down all day and starting to look quite ill or appearing confused, then that should definitely uh, be seen. So the first steps are really to try to make an accurate diagnosis so that cultures from the blood and other, any other relevant parts of the body, urinary tract or sputum cultures, are obtained, but especially blood cultures, because if you can identify an organism that's in the blood, that helps to guide the specific treatment. Fluids are administered, and based on what the presumed source of infection might be, antibiotics are usually started right away. Sepsis refers to the signs of inflammation in the presence of presumed infection. Severe sepsis means you've got that and signs of organ damage, lung injury, impaired kidney function, impaired liver function. Septic shock means you have all of those findings of severe sepsis, but now you've given initial resuscitation of fluid and there's still low blood pressure, poor urine output, breathing troubles. There's still signs of ongoing sepsis despite the initial resuscitation. Now that's septic shock. That has an associated risk of death in the hospital of about 20 to 30 percent most of the time.